that tells the tale of the disappearance of Ichabod Crane, schoolmaster of Sleepy Hollow, the very same unfortunate Ichabod who encountered the ghost of a Hessian soldier whose body is buried in the town churchyard. The specter is known at all the country firesides by the name of the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow. It was the very witching time of night that Ichabod pursued his travels homewards. No signs of life occurred to him, but occasionally the melancholy chirp of a cricket. All the stories of ghosts and goblins that he had heard now came crowding upon his recollection. The night grew darker and darker. A small brook crossed the road and ran into a thickly wooded glen. A few rough logs laid side by side served as a bridge over this stream. To pass this bridge was the severest trial. This has ever since been considered a haunted stream. As he approached, his heart began to thump. He summoned up all his resolution and attempted to dash briskly across the bridge. Ichabod jerked the reins, and his horse, Gunpowder, plunged to the opposite side of the road into a thicket of brambles, then dashed forward and came to a stand by the bridge with a suddenness that had nearly sent the schoolmaster sprawling over his head. Just at this moment, a splash by the side of the bridge caught the ear of Ichabod. In the dark shadows of the grove, he beheld something huge, misshapen, and towering. It stirred not, but seemed gathered up in gloom. The hair of Ichabod rose upon his head with terror. What was to be done? To turn and fly, t'was now too late. And besides, what chance was there of escaping ghost or goblin, if such it was? Then the shadowy object of alarm put itself in motion. With a scramble and a bound stood at once in the middle of the road. He appeared to be a horseman of large dimensions and mounted on a black horse of powerful frame. Ichabod quickened his steed in hopes of leaving him behind. The stranger, however, quickened his horse to an equal pace. Ichabod pulled up and fell into a walk, thinking to lag behind. The other did the same. On mounting a rising ground, which brought the figure of his fellow traveler in relief against the sky, Ichabod was horror-struck on perceiving that he was headless. But his horror was still more increased on observing that the head which should have rested on his shoulders, was carried before him on the pommel of his saddle. His terror rose to desperation. Away then they dashed through the thick and the thin, stones flying, sparks flashing at every bound. Ichabod's flimsy garments fluttered in the air as he stretched his long, lank body away over the horse's head in the eagerness of his flight. They had now reached the road, which turns off to Sleepy Hollow, but gunpowder who seemed possessed with a demon, made an opposite turn and plunged headlong downhill to the left. This road led over a bridge to a green knoll on which stands a church. The panic of the steed had given his unskillful rider an apparent advantage in the chase. An opening in the trees now cheered him with the hopes that the church bridge was at hand. For once he crossed that very bridge, the ghost's power would surely end. Just then, he heard the black steed panting and blowing close behind him. He even fancied that he felt his hot breath. Old Gunpowder sprang upon the bridge. He thundered over the resounding planks. He gained the opposite side, and now Ichabod cast a look behind to see if the pursuer should vanish. Just then, he saw the goblin rising in his stirrups, and in the very act of hurling his head at him, Ichabod endeavored to dodge the horrible missile, but too late, it encountered his cranium with a tremendous crash was tumbled headlong into the dust, and gunpowder, the black steed, and the goblin rider passed by like a whirlwind. The next morning, the old horse was found soberly cropping the grass at his master's gate. Dinner hour came, but no Ichabod. The boys assembled at the schoolhouse and strolled idly about the banks of the brook, but no schoolmaster. And after diligent investigation, they came upon his traces on the bank of a broad part of the brook where the water ran deep and black. was found the hat of the unfortunate Ichabod, and close beside it, a shattered.